Hey guys, it's Dawn Prickett, and I wanted to sit and chat with you for a minute today. Excuse the funky lighting. I'm actually on my front porch. Today is Labor Day, and so my family is all home, and they are... <laughs> I'm hiding on the porch because it's the only somewhat quiet place in my house right now. And so that means that I'm on my laptop and I've got some funky lighting and the wind blowing. And so you'll just have to bear with me. But I realized that it had been over a year since I had posted my video about how I started my six figure business. And if I can make the magic work, it'll appear right here. And you can click and watch that at another time. But what I didn't tell you is that it took me essentially four years to make that first $100,000 in my business. And why it took me that long? Some of it is ignorance as a business owner. Some of it is my insistence that I had to do everything myself. And some of it is simply the fact that I had five small children. And um, between 2014 and 2018, which was my first $100,000 in this business, at least since I started counting, um, I'd been running the business much longer than that, but that's about the time that I, that I started counting in my software and really started taking the business seriously. And so it took me that long in part because, well, I did have five small children. And all of the inherent things that are, that are a part of having five small children. And the two youngest are twins. And that eats up a lot of your life. But the biggest difference that, that changed is, you know, in 2014, I started taking things seriously. You know, I started tracking my, my sales. I had um, proper accounting and things like that. Um, in 2016, I joined Handmade Titan University with Renee Christine, and she's that's the training that I mentioned in the previous video. And at that point, I learned about how to build an email list, how to start email marketing, and how to build a collection, and how to make my business feel polished. Um, the end of that year, I actually built my own website through her architect training, and things were going pretty swimmingly. In 2017, um, we moved 600 miles away <laughs> to an entirely different state. And some of that was our choice and some of it was my husband's, my husband's work. But um, for about half of the year in 2017, my business was completely closed down because I, I was trying to sell a house. And it's difficult to sell a house when you've got boxes and shipping supplies and, and everything all over the place, particularly when there are already seven people living in a 1500 square foot house. There's already a lot of stuff. So we had packed up almost half the house. And um, for half the year, I didn't have a business running. And 2018 was our first year in, um, in Idaho. And once I had a nice stable situation, um, things took off dramatically there. And you'll notice when I posted my video last year in 2019, that a lot of what I was talking about was in that previous year in 2018 and how things had really taken off and really taken hold. But it took me four years of my accounting to make my first 100,000 in, in this business. It took me 14 months to make my second 100,000. And it has taken me just seven months to make my next 100,000. And the biggest difference between the first 100,000, the second 100,000, and the third 100,000 is I started advertising. And I don't know why it took me so long to realize that I could advertise. I think some of it is that all of the training for maker businesses almost obsessively avoid the idea of spending money for advertising. They're really very much focused on a shoestring budget and trying to get the most that you can for free and working on your tags and your titles on, on Etsy and um, SEO and posting on social media and all of these things. And they're great. They're wonderful. And it's I'm so glad that all of the trainers are out there are attempting to work with makers when we're all just starting out and we don't have any money. The problem that I ran into is all of these promotion methods that are talked about to maker businesses are essentially um, search-based. And 
So somebody has to know that you or something like you exists and they have to be actively searching for that on the internet in order to find you. So Etsy SEO or Google SEO for that matter is based on finding out what terms people are searching for in the search engine or Pinterest or any of these things are focused on search terms. The problem that I was running across is that in the fiber industry, there are only so many search terms. And then secondly, that um, really nobody was searching for what I was selling because they didn't know that it existed. And it wasn't until I realized the difference here between a, um, a search-based promotion versus a disruption disruptive promotion that I really saw a big shift in my business and really saw people started coming in. In fact, that when I started advertising on Facebook, which is a disruptive style, that I had so many people coming into my shop that I physically could not keep up with orders and I had to ratchet down my ads. I, I was only spending like $4 a day maybe $8 a day on advertising. And I was at max capacity of what I myself could handle. And so, you know, the difference between a search based is that you have to know the keywords that they're looking for and they have to actively be looking for it. Something like you. A disruptive um, promotion method is that you actually tell Facebook or Instagram who your people are and they put your product in front of them. So they don't have to even know that it exists. They just see it and they're like, oh, why didn't I even know that this existed? It, it blew my brain that I had been selling this main product for over a decade. And I don't know how many people commented on my ads. I didn't even know this existed. Where was this all of my life? And because I had been using all of the search based promotion methods of posting on social media to people who already knew who I was or to um, looking for keywords and things, I'm like, oh, my. So my main product is called a row counter. And so obviously the search term is row counter. Nobody searches for gifts for knitters or or things like that, honestly. And so I was very limited and nobody was searching for it. And so when I switched to searching for an audience, um, the disruptive plan, and put my, my, my ads in front of the people who I knew would like it, and all of a sudden I found my people. And it was astounding. And like I said, I reached the point of where I physically could not handle anymore. And my business kind of plateaued. And that was about the point where I hated my life. And I had a Black Friday sale, and I think we had 100 orders come in over the weekend. And I about died because I made every single order to order right when they ordered it because I have so many options available in my, in my shop. There was no way that I could determine whether they were going to want a size large with a turquoise or a size small with a amethyst or what they were going to want. So I didn't make anything ahead of time. And I, like I said, I about died. I hated my business. I hated my life. I hated everything about it. And then I had another very wise coach. His name is Todd Herman. Um, tell me, well, Dawn, you've reached the point. You've reached the next stage in your business. And now you need to hire help. And I, and I pushed against that so hard for a year, for a year. I pushed against that and I said, no, I don't want to be a boss. I don't want to have to deal with other people. I don't, you know, I'm a, I, I, I'm a terrible person for that sort of thing. I'm just a creative. Can I just sell stuff? Maybe I should change my product to something that doesn't require as much labor. Maybe I can change to some other business so that um, it's all digital and that'll be easier. And I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried all sorts of different things. It wasn't until I hired my first assistant that I got some relief. And my first assistant was my daughter, my 15 year old daughter. <laughs> and I paid her, I paid her good money. And um, she helped me make products ahead of time. And that worked. And so I hired 
another assistant and she actually works in another state from me and I ship her supplies and she ships me um, products that I can put in my in my inventory. And then I was trucking along with that, but there's still only so much that I could fulfill. And so I hired an assistant to work in the studio with me. Oh my gosh, pushing against that because you know what? I had all these excuses as to why I couldn't do that. I didn't have a space in my house that I could do that. I, I felt like I needed a special desk and a work location just for this person. And oh my goodness, they couldn't possibly work in the same space that my family lives. I didn't know whether I wanted to have anybody, you know, I, I, how do I pay them? How do I do all the, how do I do any of this? And I, I pushed against it. I pushed against it. I pushed against it. And that same wonderful coach Todd said, I think you should lean into it. Give it, give it a, give it 90 days, give it three months and see if you still hate it. You can always change it, you know, see if you still hate it. And I did. And you know what? Oh my gosh. I love my business. I love my assistants. I now have five assistants in my business. And because I have five assistants, um, remember how I had to ratchet down the advertising so that it, I, I was only spending like $8 a day or $4 a day. I ratcheted that down so that I wasn't getting too many orders. Having assistants, let me open that up. So or I, you know, I was so overwhelmed by a hundred orders in a weekend to where I, or maybe it was only 50 orders or something like that, where I was sobbing on the floor, literally. And now we regularly fulfill a hundred orders a week, easily, easy, easy peasy. My assistant, I have two of them that work in the office for me, Shauna and Shauna. <laughs> if you get, if you get our emails, um, you may have seen them. And um, they work, they each work like 12 hours a week um, in the mornings in my studio with me four days a week. And so we work from like nine to noon and we bam, knock out those orders. And I have so much more time to do all of the other millions of things that running a business requires because I had help. And because I had help, I could ratchet up those ads some more which means my revenue and my income ratcheted up more. And yes, my expenses went up because I'm now paying people, but there's more percentage left over for me, which means I went from making $100,000 in four years and barely some months paying myself 500 bucks to um, making $100,000 in seven months of 2020. 2020 people, um, $100,000 in seven months of 2020 and paying myself regularly $5,000 a month, easy. And there's plenty of money to feed the business, plenty of money to pay my assistants. And I realized the difference that it makes when you no longer choose to be selfish and want to do everything yourself, but are willing to open that up and allow other people to be a part of that um, whether that's through a collaboration with someone else, whether that's hiring an assistant and letting them be a part of something made all the difference in my business. <laughs> my neighbors have decided that now is the perfect time to saw things. Yay. <laughs> okay. So my friends, with all of that said, um, I've had so many of my business friends ask me, okay, Dawn, I know that your Facebook ads are knocking it out of the park and are, you know, making such a huge difference in your business. How do you do that? And so I made a little training. Um, it's called your first Facebook ad and it walks through all of the technical things of how to set up a, your first Facebook ad and my little tips and tricks of what things you don't even need to worry about and the other things that are most important so that you can get your ads up and running too. So if you think that um, disruptive advertising, disruptive promotion methods might be better for your business, your product, than all of the SEO in the world is doing, and here's a hint, yeah, yeah, it'll help you. <laughs> um, then go ahead and click down in the, in the description. I've got a link to my Your First Facebook Ads training.
Okay. It's on my personal website instead of on the twice your cheap website. It's on donprickett.com. And I'd love to help you out too. I want to see your business go from wherever you're starting at right now to where your best selling product is selling like hotcakes and you can start ratcheting up so that you can make the money that you need to. And so that you can support your family and so that your business can take off like a rocket ship too. Okay. I love you all. I will see you next time. Goodbye.